In this video, we're going to talk about shopping bots, sneaker bots, scalper bots, and how they can help you buy shoe drops, PlayStation 5s, and many popular items online. So hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you stay educated on how your money works. There are thousands of people who use these shopping bots and don't really understand what they're doing. Shopping bots are surprisingly complex pieces of software that automate the online shopping process. So in this video, we're going to talk about how shopping bots actually work by explaining what they're trying to accomplish. So what's a shopping bot, otherwise known as a sneaker bot or a scalper bot? A shopping bot is a complicated piece of software designed to buy just about anything really, really fast online. Bots are meant to be used for high demand items such as latest sneaker releases or the PlayStation 5. During these releases, users with bots can sometimes purchase these sought after items in only a few seconds. It's almost impossible to compete with them. These bots are also huge business. Bots sold online can run up to $500 depending on their feature sets. The companies that build and sell these bots justify this price because users could potentially use the bot to buy and resell these items. So why should you care how they work? It's an interesting to know and it's meant for those who really want to understand the system. Bots really are surprisingly complicated, especially ones sold publicly online. They're also pretty cool. So then let's talk about understanding websites. The first thing worth understanding is how websites really work. The typical website has three basic layers. The first layer is called the front end and it's how the average user interacts with an application. When you try to buy a PlayStation 5 on walmart.com, you search for PS5 using the Walmart website front end. It's the front facing interface to the rest of the service that Walmart provides. Walmart wants to make it as easy as possible for you to sign up, look for the products you want to buy, and then buy them. They don't want you to have to see all this complicated information related to their operations, probably because you really couldn't care less. For example, the Walmart purchase process should feel really smooth. When Walmart asks you for your payment information, you don't really have to deal with making sure your information is secure or validating that you actually put a real credit card number in or any number of small details that Walmart needs to care about. They hide that from you by making the front end as simple as possible. Still, the front end needs to somehow tell Walmart that you're looking to buy a PS5. This is where the back end layer comes into play. We'll also start to talk about the data layer. To make this as simple as possible, imagine you're running a lemonade stand. Your front end is the actual stand. It's got the information about prices, maybe different drink sizes, different lemonade flavors. You want to make it as easy as possible for someone to see your lemonade stand, pick their drink, and pay you for the drink. In this scenario, you're the back end. You care about a lot more things than the person buying lemonade. You probably care about how many lemonades you have left, how many sugar you have left, and who's buying your lemonade. When someone asks you for lemonade, you handle all the processes related to making their drink and updating your information about how much lemonade you have left. The consumer just wants to be able to order lemonade and walk away happy. So the best way to imagine bots in our scenario is like a literal lemonade buying robot. Imagine your lemonade has gotten really popular, maybe Kanye West endorsed it or something. You're terrible at matching lines so people just stand outside your lemonade stand and shout their orders at you until they get a lemonade. Someone decides that they're tired of shouting and builds a lemonade order shouting robot. Robots don't get tired of shouting and robots know exactly what to shout in order to get your attention. Plus, with so many people trying to order lemonade, the average person can't even shout loud enough to be heard by you. So let's put this all together. So this is what a shopping bot does. Bots don't care about a human usable front end. Why bother? When we build bots, we look at what the front end is trying to tell the back end. This is called a request. Then we copy that request and automate it so we can send that request over and over and over again, really, really fast. This is like our shouting robot that knows exactly what to shout and doesn't get tired of shouting. We don't even need to worry about a physical browser because we know what the front end is trying to tell the back end. Packages like Python requests allow you to make these requests very easily. Most good shopping bots don't even think about a browser or a website. That just takes extra resources and time that aren't worth thinking about. As a consumer, you go directly to the back end and tell it what you're trying to do in the format that it expects. So when the next drop of Yeezys or PS5 comes out, you just go online, search for a shopping bot and go from there. So what are your thoughts? Are you going to buy a shopping bot? Are you having trouble getting a highly sought after item online? Leave a comment down below and let's get the discussion started. And as always, Take care of your money. Today's book of the day is Once a Warrior by Jake Wood. I'll leave a link to the book down below, and if you prefer listening to it on an audiobook for free, I'll also leave a link to a 30 day free trial to Audible. You can choose this book or any book to listen to, and even if you cancel before your free trial is over, you can still keep the book and listen to it whenever you want.
Last thing before you go, a financial education is the most important kind of education you can give your kids. That's why I created Smart Money Parenting as a way to prepare you and your kids about the highs and lows of managing your own money. I'll leave a link to the course down below so you can check it out.